The opportunity for developers in the Web 3.0 industry is absolutely insane. The average blockchain developer salary is well under the six-figure range, with many blockchain developers earning deep six-figure salaries with some experience. You know, you can often work from wherever you want because blockchain is very remote friendly and you get to work with really exciting game changing technology building the future of the Internet. So what's not to love? But if you want to land your dream job in Web 3.0, then you need to be strategic in how you do that. And this video, I'm going to give you some of my top tips for landing your dream blockchain developer job. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. On this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. I'm going to talk about everything in this video today as someone who's helped Lots of people break into the blockchain industry and get their dream developer jobs. So if that's something that you're interested in, then definitely smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to take action on everything that I've talked about in this video today, then definitely head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started right now. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about some of my top tips for landing your dream web 3.0 developer job. So my number one tip is to first define exactly what that dream job looks like. And I've kind of put some criteria on the screen that can help you do that. So is it to work for a specific company? Like, for example, is your dream job to work for Uniswap Labs? Okay, is it for a specific use case, like working with DeFi or NFTs? Um, is it to have a specific job title, like CTO, senior developer, salary? You know, I want to make at least $150,000 per year, lifestyle, like fully remote, or maybe a bunch of vacation days. And maybe other benefits like, you know, having company equity or tokens or something like that. Okay. So that's kind of like your bingo card. And you need to fill this out so that you can know exactly what you're looking for. Maybe you can have some things that are more negotiable than others, but you wanted to clear, you know, define exactly what your non-negotiables are and what is just a nice to have. All right. So tip number two is to break it down into steps because for most people, you know, their dream developer job is not going to be their first job necessarily. Okay. Now, it depends on what it is. If you said in that one, like, hey, I just want to work at Uniswap Labs, no matter what it is, no matter what the salary is, well, maybe you could get an internship as your first job. But for most people, they're, they're going to fill a lot of different things in that card. And so for that reason, you probably need to break it down into multiple steps, okay? So most of those things are probably going to require you to have some industry experience before you can sort of write your ticket to wherever you want to go. So you want to try to figure out what those steps are. For most people, the first step is just going to be to get their foot in the door and get some experience of the industry and then take the next steps towards hitting your goal. All right, so tip number three is to get your foot in the door, okay? So that's going to be step one for a vast majority of people who are watching this video, okay? You want to take the next steps to achieving their ultimate goal because, again, most likely your first blockchain developer job is not going to be your dream job, although it still can be a lot better than whatever situation you're in right now. Most people hate their job. Most people feel like they have no upside potential in their industry or their, their line of work or they hate commuting to work. And just getting your first blockchain jo developer job can be infinitely better than whatever you're doing now. So now the trick here in order to get that first job is, and this is honestly what I would do if I was starting over from scratch, is I would go through and learn everything I needed to know in order to build my own project, all right, create a portfolio, and then just get my foot in the door somewhere and not tear too much about how much money I was making about, or at that job or like whatever the... Uh, you know, other benefits worth that job and then leverage that, you know, within a reasonable amount of time once I had that experience to get that next thing that might be my dream job or the next major stepping stone towards that dream job. And I kind of have this conversation sometimes with other developers who maybe they like get in the industry and they get kind of cushy in some sort of Web 2.0 job and they feel like, ah, my situation is like kind of good enough. But sometimes you need to humble yourself a little bit for, to get that experience in order to make that transition to something you ultimately want to do later. And that can pay off, you know, massively in the long run. So in summary, this tip is really, you know, getting your foot in the door somewhere where you can gain experience and that experience is going to be way more valuable than any money you could possibly make at that first job because it can lead to multiples of whatever that salary is, you know, in just a year or two's time. All right, so once you've got your foot in the door, okay, which is probably not going to be your dream job, but let's say your next stepping stone is your dream job, or you're at the stepping stone that is the prerequisite for getting your dream job. What's the next thing to do? What's the next major lever that you can pull that can help launch you over that threshold towards being in that dream blockchain developer job? Well, it's getting their attention, okay? So, you know, if you have the relevant experience, okay, you've gone in and you've got some real industry experience that proves that you have the skills to get that dream job and you've maybe created a portfolio, even if you're already working in the industry that shows like, hey, here's a project that I worked on that fits right in, the, in, in your use case, you need to get their attention, okay? So how do you do that? Well, there's multiple ways. I'll give you some ideas here. And one of them, the most probably the most powerful one is referrals. So if somebody you know, you know, works at a company where you can get a dream job and they know you and can vouch for you, that's one of the most powerful things on the face of the planet. Now, you can also uh, have an additional lever, which is essentially 
having some sort of you know online presence that shows this, and you don't have to build some massive, massive social media audience. It could basically just be having a Twitter account, active GitHub, and then routinely posting about what you're working on in order to get their attention that way. That can kind of help generate referrals for you, even if people haven't worked with you directly. But some other ways are to you know go to meetups and conferences or hackathons, okay? Where the, you know, the types of companies that are hiring for your dream job can be, okay, then actually talking to them and, and not necessarily like having a really hard pitch, you know, as soon as you meet people like this, but developing those races that could, you know, um, or, you know, evolve into that. And other ways can be interacting with their team members, you know, on places like Discord or LinkedIn. So a lot of crypto companies have Discord channels where they're talking to the community. If you can actually add value inside those communities, and people know what you're talking about, that can often lead to hiring conversations if, if you know if you disclose that, okay? So it doesn't mean like going into Discord and saying, hey, I need a job, but if there's actually any technical stuff that you can actually help with inside of there without you know asking anything in return, then that can lead to it. Same thing, like if a lot of these projects are open source. So if you can open pull requests on GitHub to fix even small issues, then that can show that you're, you know, helping. It can also potentially lead to those getting their attention. Also, LinkedIn's a huge way to get their attention as well. All right, so the next major thing that you need in order to land your dream Web3 Pro developer job is you need leverage, okay? So wh why is that? Well, basically, whenever you're at that spot where you have a job already and you're, like, your next step is to get your dream Web3 Pro developer job, okay, what you want to do is turn down everything that does not meet that criteria, okay? So basically, if you go back to that thing I showed you a second ago, where you had this criteria, you filled out your bingo card, so to speak, or you told about what your, what your must-haves are and what your negotiables are, what your non-negotiables are too, then everything that does not meet those non-negotiables, walk away, okay? Because there's a huge temptation when people are saying, well, this is close enough, and they take it, and they're back in that same sort of like, ah, you know, kind of feeling they felt with their old job and it's just at a different company. And that's really a lateral move or maybe even a backward move because not all jobs are what they appear on the surface. And you want to totally avoid that. So how do you use this leverage and then turn down everything that, you know, is not an absolute yes? Well, one is that, you know, whenever you're making that transition, that's why I was talking about break down multiple steps. You need to have a step that is secure before you move to that next step of your dream job. So like the step that precedes that needs to be just good enough to where you're, you know, financially sound and your needs are met so that everything that's not a screaming yes towards that dream job is just an absolute no. Because you don't care about something that's marginally better than what you have, but what you want is a huge step in that next direction. And if you've got that, it's going to be way easier to just uh, say no to everything that's not the absolute yes. All right, so my last major tip on landing your dream Web 3.0 developer job is to negotiate, <laughs> Okay. So whenever you're talking to a company that you feel like might be your dream web 3.0 developer job or could give you that job, you know, the offer could be 90% of what your dream job is and the last 10% to push that over the threshold might just be negotiating, okay? Because, you know, pretty much every job opportunity is negotiable, okay? But in order to negotiate, you need what I was talking about in the previous tip, which is you need that leverage because... This is what most people don't understand about negotiation. They, they think it's really some magical like technique, you know, in order to say the right things, to manipulate people into doing things that they previously would not have done. That's not really what it is. Like most of negotiation is like 90% just having leverage, having the ability to walk away and say no, and actually doing that if people don't really do what you want to ask. And a lot of times in negotiations, like they're going to do that, but you have to be okay with walking away if it's not exactly what you want, okay? But negotiation can be a big difference in pushing something over the threshold in terms of it being your dream job or not being your dream job. Now, I'll say that with a caveat, which is, you know, most negotiations are really just going to take something and improve it, okay? It's not going to make an opportunity radically different than what it was before. I think a lot of people think that they can just mag magically negotiate something being two or 300% better than it was before. That's not really the truth. Most cases, you're looking at like maybe a 10 to 20% improvement, okay? Like maybe, you know, you had, maybe, you know, you, you might be able to get something that's like, you know, a certain percentage higher in salary, but you're probably not going to like triple your salary, for example, or maybe you want to get an extra week off for vacation days or something like that because they really want you and you got something else. Like you can probably get that, but they're probably not going to say you can have, you know, six months off. Like it's not going to happen. So be realistic about what you can negotiate, but you need leverage in order to do it. It could be a powerful opportunity from taking something from a B plus to an A plus opportunity. All right. So those are my top tips for landing your dream Web 3.0 developer job. So if you like this video, then definitely smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to take action on everything that I'm talking about today, 
what can you do? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. They like you to be courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos, you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you'll take a master shortcut entirely, go through the throat and implement everything that I'm talking about today, then I can show you how to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Again, you don't have to be an expert to get started right now. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.